Right, I've done a video on backgrounds in CSS, but I haven't talked about gradients, which is part of the background. Now, we can do linear gradients, we can do radial gradients, we can do repeating linear gradients, and repeating radial gradients. So lots of choice here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the properties, explain how each of these work. I'll give you the source code to this, and then there's also a CSS gradient generator. Well, actually, there's quite a few of them out there, but I'll show you one CSS gradient uh, generator. You can use that if you want. Uh, it's a great way to quickly build it, but it's good to know how the properties work so that you can edit them after the fact. Okay, so in the first one here, in this box, we've got a linear gradient. Now, as I was saying, it's part of the background property. I've got a background color solid set and then I've got a linear gradient. Now I don't need this solid color here, I can just remove that if I want, make the whole thing just the linear gradient. There we are. Now this is going to be using several parts. The first part of linear gradient is the direction. So I'm saying I want to go to the bottom right. So bottom right corner of whatever the shape is, square, rectangle, and then from there back to its opposite side. So going from here to the bottom right. Now you can say to left, to right, to top, to bottom, to bottom right, to bottom left, to top right, to top left, any one of those, or you can just put in a degree. If you know what the angle is, I can do something like, well, this will be zero degrees at the top, 90 is over here, 180 is at the bottom, 270 is over here, and then figure out any of the degrees in between. So between 90 and 180 here, uh, let's go with about 120 degrees. So 120 degrees, there we are, 120 degrees, starting at yellow. At the 70% mark, I want to be at gold. So going in the 120 degrees, when I reach the 70% mark around here, this is going to be gold, and then I'm going to go from gold to red. Red's my final color. You have to have at least two colors to make a gradient. Beyond that, you can put as many as you want. We could go in, come in here and say, I want green at 20%. So it goes from yellow to green to gold to red. So you can put these percentages in there to make color stops along the way. Um, if you don't put in the percentages, which is absolutely fine, it's just going to evenly break this up across. Now you probably don't want something that looks like this, but you can put in as many colors as you want. Let's, uh, something a little bit less offensive here. So from yellow to orange to gold to red. All right, so that's linear gradient. With radial gradient, um, I did the same thing. I've got a background color in the background. It's not going to show up at all unless one of the colors that you have inside of here is transparent. If you have a transparent color as one of the color stops, then you are going to see whatever the background color is showing through there. Now, I don't have one, so I'm just going to remove it just to keep the syntax a little bit simpler to read. We've got the first property here for radial gradient. We've got a shape, which is either circle or ellipse. Those are our two choices. So shape is going to be either circle or ellipse. Those are our two choices. Then we've got four choices for the position. There is closest side, furthest side, closest corner, or farthest corner. I've picked farthest corner. So we haven't specified where a position. This is where it's going to. So it by default starts at the center and it's going to the farthest corner, which would be, well, really any of the four corners. And we've set up yellow to cornflower blue. So those are our two colors. Again, we can set up multiple colors. We could add another color here, add another one, and so on. You can see how you're creating them just out from the center here. If we changed circle to ellipse, this is what we get. 
I'm going to go back to circle. Farthest corner. We can also say one other thing that we can put in here, and that is the horizontal and vertical position for the start. This is where we're going. This is where we're starting. So 20% horizontally and then 50% down. So right here, this is where my radial gradient begins. So my yellow to cornflower blue to green to purple. If we don't specify any of this stuff at all, let's just temporarily remove that. This is what we get. By default, we get an ellipse starting in the center, going to the farthest corner. That's what you get for default. So you can go radial gradient and just give two colors and you would get the radial gradient or three or four or however many colors you want. But these are the other properties that we can show in inside there. All right, moving on, repeating linear gradient. With a linear gradient, what we're doing is we're creating a linear gradient, but after the angle, we are creating kind of points along there. So we're starting with red. This is our first color. We're going to red, and it's going to be five pixels in. So I'm going to change this to 90 degrees, so we're going directly across. That might make a little bit more sense here. So we're going from zero to five pixels is red. Then we're going transparent from five pixels to 10 pixels. If I change this to 30, there you can see from zero to five is red, from five to 30 is transparent. And this is this background color right here. So the background is showing through and again, we can make as many of these color stops as you want. You just have to make sure that each one of these, there's two values. There's a starting and an ending point. If you want this to work properly, because without this ending point, it's just going to carry on to the very end, all the way to here. It's basically not repeating anything. It's just a linear gradient. So for each one of these points, we have a start, we have an end. If I change this one to 10, I should be starting this one at 10 as well. So a 10 pixel wide, and then a 20 pixel wide, and then a 10 pixel, then a 20, then a 10, then a 20. And we could change these transparents to white. Now we've got the alternating between white and the red. Okay, so I get, I'm sure you get the point now. Put that back to the 45. There we go. And Something else you can do with both these linear repeating gradient, the repeating linear gradient and the repeating radial gradient is you can actually apply multiple gradients. Now I've done transparent here. I could put a comma after this and then create another one. So repeating linear gradient. There we are. And I'm going to go the opposite, opposite way, negative 45 degrees. And let's do the same thing. We'll say red to red at 10 pixels. And the other one I did transparent. This one I'm going to do white. So we'll say white 10 pixels, white 30 pixels. And am I missing something? Let's take out this color. There we are. So it didn't like the color. Oh, and one last thing to get this effect to really work nicely. Uh, instead of a solid white, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, um, or as, as, instead of a solid red, I'm going to use um, something that's got an alpha built into it to let it show through. So we can do RGBA or HSLA. So there's red, no green, no blue, and then set this to 20%. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. missing our 10 pixel here. There we are. And I'm going to change my red on the first one as well. Both these. There we go. 
Let's bump up the transparency a little bit, like 50%. I'll go back to white. So you can see, you can play around, you can get all kinds of effects here. I'm not going to waste any more time playing around with this one, but you can get some pretty cool effects. Uh, same thing with the radial gradients, with the repeating radial gradient. You start off with circle or ellipse, and then we're providing, uh, I'm just taking the default, so it's starting in the center. Black from 0 to 20 pixels. So for my center point, I'm going 20 pixels out, and then I've got a 2 pixel transparent, which is letting this purple color from the background show through. If I make this a little bit bigger, uh, let's go from 20 to 30. There we are. So you can see the purple is showing through here at each of the steps. And we can do the same sort of thing as we did here. We can add a comma and give another repeating radial gradient with a different starting point and have overlapping things and get into some interesting patterns that way. Not that you're going to be doing that very often. The majority of the time you're going to be working with linear gradients occasionally a radial gradient, and then on very rare instances, repeating linear or radial gradients. Most of the time you're going to be working with linear gradients. And if you're going to be doing that, use a generator. Don't bother trying to type all this out yourself. Use a generator. So cssgradient.io, I'll put the link inside the description for you guys, along with this uh, code sample as a code gist so you can download it and play with it. Um, a lot of these gradient generators work the same sort of way. You will have a demonstration of what it is. You can pick the color. So this is for this one. I've got this one selected and I'm changing the color at the end. If I click the middle one or if I click the end one, you can see I can change what that one is. By coming into here, I have this first one selected. I can change the hue. So there's the hue, which is the background for all of this. Change the first one, and then there's the gradient that I've got going there. The alpha level for whichever one is selected. If I come into this one and I change the alpha to something that's much less, now I've got the alpha. The opacity is, is dropped on this one. There's the color stops. Here's the angle that it's at. So we can play around with this, change the angle, 133 degrees. Now if I come up, you can see it's on a bit of an angle. And here's the CSS. Copy to clipboard. Click that to save it. If you need to be backward compatible, like if you need to support older versions of browsers, click the checkbox. You get all of the different syntax. So the original version of Mozilla's linear gradient. So this is early versions of Mozilla. And then you had early versions of Chrome and how they did it. Um, following that was the actual linear gradient. And then the filter property, this is old versions of IE, like IE 6 and 7. Uh, they supported the filter property for doing gradients. And that's it. So you've got all of these things are all built into these gradient generators, which make it much easier than typing. But it's important to understand how the properties work. So once you get this, if later on you decide that you need to make some edits, if you understand how it works, how the syntax works, then you'll be able to make the changes without going back to the gradient and setting up all the properties again. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.